active as well. Okay, so the recording is on, the recording is on. Okay, so let me just dive right into it. So it's a review session and Q&A, Joseph Fadio, I'm the, I'm the um, facilitator for this session. Who is Joseph Fadio, is a BI analyst. He has a couple of Microsoft certifications, which he got by taking um, different Microsoft exams at some certain point in time. Um, here's a brief overview of his profile. Um, so he does a lot of things with the community. He's a business intelligence analyst and a trainer who specializes in providing maximum value from business data and automating repetitive process through the aid of the Power Platform. So um, I also do some Power Platform as well, Azure and Power BI and Excel as well. So here's my profile. Uh, yeah, my profile as well, so you can take a look at this. So today's session is not about me, it's about you. It's about you. So I've seen a lot of interesting things online, interesting things online. Um, before I proceed, I just want to say hi to us virtually. Hi to us virtually. Um, I'm going to share my, I'm going to say hi to us in a unique way. So just hold on. OK. So I'm going to. So it's loading. OK, so I won't say hi to us. So right now I've seen a lot of interesting and fantastic dashboard, fantastic analysis. But can you present your can you present your reports? Can you present the work you've done? So data analysis be, goes beyond just um, you analyzing, you creating charts, creating pivot, creating pivot tables, creating um, different things. It goes also into can you tell a story with this data that you have? So right now, I need confident people, people that are sure that they know what they did, they can defend what they did. Just tell us a story about the data. Tell us some of your um, thought process about um, building the report. Though we had a video guide, but you might have done something different. You might have done um, something interesting, something nice. It can also be a learning point you gain from the data itself while you are doing your simple reports from the data. So right now, I'll be calling on volunteers in five minutes, not, no more than five minutes, sorry, three minutes rather, in three minutes, no more than three minutes. I want at least five people to come and present what they've done. So by presenting it that way, you know, oh, you really, really understand the whole data analysis and all. Also, in today's session, we will also be taking questions, some challenges you face while you are clean, while you are doing the project. You can note them down. You can ask your questions. But right now, I need three, at least five people that will present what they've done. Any volunteers, any volunteers, you can raise your hand if you can, if you want to do that. So I can see three people's hands are raised. Raise your hand, raise your hand if you want to do that. So four, okay, I can see three. I just need one more. I just need one more, one more person. Okay, five. So I'll be going it, I'll be taking it in the order that I can see it, in the order I can see it. So I'll be making you a presenter. So just take, just see the scenario as you are giving this data in your organization. The point of this data analytics bootcamp is to hopefully by the end of this bootcamp or even during this bootcamp, you will have enough skills to get employed anywhere in the world. People wouldn't be looking for you. Uh, uh, sorry. You won't be looking for jobs. Jobs will be looking for you. And that's what this analytic boost um, entails. So I, I was part of the coordinators in the last session, and a lot of people, either by this bootcamp or some other means, they got jobs, they got um, referrals, they also got other opportunities by doing this bootcamp. So this in this scenario, we want we don't just want to train you, we want to see can you present your findings, can you present your results? That you got from the data. So right now I'll be starting from Olaiyemi. See, please, when I call you, 
you can unmute your mic, you can share your screen, then you can just briefly, no more than three minutes, just tell us what you did, what you learned, uh, the insight you got from the data. So I'll be starting with Ola MC. Hey, hi, Ola MC, can you hear me? Can you hear me? If you can hear me, just unmute your mic. Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Can you see me? Very good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. Yes, good afternoon. Um, I'm Ola MC, and I would say a very big thank you to the organizers of this um, Copper Analytics um, workshop. I'm very, very grateful. And for the opportunity to be able to, you know, practice and everything, Sha. Hmm. Also, um, so as exciting creating a dashboard, making use of Excel, actually. Very, very exciting. Though there were some challenges that <laughs> people like us are using 2016 were facing. Some kind of tiny, tiny bit challenges. Do I have some questions that I want to ask? I don't know if it is possible for me to ask the questions now. Because okay, okay, I so, do know. Um, I, Okay, Hello. can you hear me? Yes, I can yeah, hear can you. Hear me. Yes, okay, I can okay. hear you. Yeah, yes, yes, you will ask your question. There will be time for question. But now, now this beginning is presentation. I, do you have something to present? Mm, not really. Okay. Okay, so just right. go to your question. You can come to the Q and A section. You can type it as well. Um, I will address the question. So we just want to quickly see what everybody has done. So thank you very much, Ola uh, Yemisi, for your time. Thank you for the review as well. So, so right now I'll be asking. Hi, Patricia. Do you have something to present? Hi, Patricia. Do you have your dashboard ready to present? Are you confident in your presentation? Hi, um, good afternoon. Good Mr. afternoon. Yeah, I was trying my presentation. No, I yeah, I can hear you. Good afternoon. Though. Can you go ahead? Yes. Um, according to the dash, my dashboard, the total sale was two million two hundred and ninety-two thousand. $669. And the profit generated from the Superstore because the name of the company okay. is Superstore. I'm switching from my, my dashboard. Can you hear me? Yeah, you can share your screen. You can sh Hello, can you hear me? You can share your screen. Also, yeah. others, you can drop, your, drop a picture of your dashboard in the chat. If I see an interesting one I want to review, I can also bring you up to speak. So, hi, Patricia, you can share your screen as well. So you can quickly share I'm using share my screen. phone to, to attend the, the meeting. I'm using oh, okay. my phone to do it, but I'm not using it. Okay, you can drop the picture of your dashboard in the chat so I can just um, look at it. Okay, okay. Hi, blessing. Kindly that, come. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So let everybody see what you're presenting. So please, if you are coming up to present, have your dashboard ready, share your screen. Let's be interactive, you are presented to us. And hopefully you can feature in Atiwali's YouTube channel. <laughs> so, so yeah, so it's also <laughs> it's up to, it's up to nice. It's something nice. So, uh, okay, this is very, very interesting. Can we all see my screen? Can we all see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so go ahead, go ahead. We can yeah. see your numbers, we can relate to it. So, so according to the dashboard, 
according to the dashboard, the total sale mm -hmm. of the super, of superstore is two million two hundred and ninety six thousand six hundred and sixty nine dollars. Why the profit made generated from those sales? That's when you remove the cost of the goods from the from the selling price. You understand? Is Two hundred and eighty-six thousand three hundred and ninety-three dollar, and the quantity sold is thirty-seven thousand eight hundred and seventy-three. Then, from the analysis, it is shown that the transaction made is nine thousand transactions, nine thousand nine hundred and ninety-four transactions. Then, that's all I know. Then, customers that uh, consumers, that's the the state, or should I say the, the state where it was allocated, the total states, like the consumers from total states is 19,521. Then no sum was, was, was delivered at home, actually. So it's 6,744. And the discount on all the sales, the total discount on all the sales, because, you know, if, I should have put it. In each sale, there's usually discounts. Not all the sales, but like in some sales, there was discounts. So the discount in total is 1,569. And 1,561, sorry. Then it's the, if you look at your screen, you see the top, five, the top 10 sales. Okay. Okay, so to... thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. You've done you've done excellently well. I can see your dash, but it looks it looks nice. It looks it looks nice. So um the only probably one thing you need to look at is the legibility of your some of your um some of your text. So like I I'm finding it a little bit hard to read some of these values. The when I zoom in is a bit clearer, so maybe you can decide to choose a different um, font color from that. But aside aside from that, mm -hmm. you you know, you did you did well you did well. Presentation. So mm -hmm. the the only other thing I read my remark on this is presentation. So as much as possible, we can see what is on your screen. We can see the the, the dashboard already. So what insight are you? Given to us outside, uh, beyond what is just seen on our screen. That that's sort of what I was looking for. But you've done an amazing job. Well done, once again. So thank you, thank you, um, thank you very much for your time. So okay. right now, just be taking is it two more? Or, okay, three more. So hi, um, prepare me. So I'll make a presenter. Open me, you can speak, you can share your screen. Um, good evening, sir. Good day. Hello, good evening. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Are you sharing your screen? I want to, yeah, I want to move. I will share now. Yes, sir. This is my work, sir. Hello, I cannot hear you. Okay, okay. So yeah, sharing your video, but but it's fine. It's fine. Um, there's a little bit of lag. Well, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, like this, sir. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah sharing your video, but go ahead. Yes, sir. So I was unable to during my this dashboard. I'm using 2016 as sir. So with some things they asked us to do in the video, I was unable to do some like putting icons. Do you ask us to download some icons online? But I was unable to mm -hmm. do that. I was unable to get that. So okay. another thing that I noticed was that when I want to copy some things, like this California now, when he was doing his own, California to Washington. Can you see mm -hmm. it, sir? Uh, it's a... It's a a bit blur, but I don't so know if it's from my end. You were able to copy the O O O part from the California to the Washington. I was unable to copy my own, so I have to. Copy. Uh, 
Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Sorry, I yes. think there was a little bit of network delay. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, sir. OK, so so in regards to your question, in regards to your um, question of icons, so there are amazing sites you can get icons for. Um, so I can share a couple. Okay. One which you one one which you can get from it, flaticon.com is is very very nice. So if you go to flaticon.com, you can get interesting icons. Okay. You can even get animated icons too. So you can get it if that's your thing. Okay, There's also icon it icon it.com. So. So that that, that okay. should answer your question. Your second question on Excel version on um on 2016 limitation. Okay, so the the truth is Excel has changed over the Excel has changed over the years. Excel has okay. changed over the years, and there are a lot of things you can do with Microsoft. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So. OK, so I said a lot of things have changed over the years and a lot of things have been improved on in Excel over the years. So that's why Excel history, Excel history is a lot. But one thing you need to know is that a lot of things you can do, um, a lot of things you can do in the later version. You can still to some extent do it in the older versions. It's just that it's a little bit more tedious, more tedious to do in the sense that you may have to go around it in a longer, in a longer route, in a longer route. Mm. But that was one of the benefits why, I don't know if you are on the WhatsApp group, there's something uh, called a Microsoft. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm with you, sir. I'm inside the WhatsApp group. Okay, so there's something called, there's something called a Microsoft developer account it gives you access. Microsoft has thought, oh, people would like to learn about our product. The point of a developer account is to learn, it's to learn, it's not for business or commercial use. Or Microsoft has, has an amazing pro um, program which allows people to use the Microsoft 365 for free for a period, a particular period in time, a particular period in time. Uh, ideally, it's 90 days, but it, they extend it based on your usage and your um, and how much you use it. But the max extension that I've heard is one year. So one year, basically, you can use um, that, pro, that platform. So with that, um, you get a lot of the latest features. There are a lot of things you can do with Microsoft 365, but you can still achieve some with your Excel 20. 2016 as well. Yeah. So I hope and I've answered about, your question. Yeah, thank you, sir. And about the, the this thing, this is my color. You can see it's the one I used. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The second one I used, I was trying those colors, I was trying to I have to make it by myself because there is no X or so on this 2016. And I didn't get the way they explained the group too. The okay, so you can so what so one thing you can do is check on Google the X color the X we have a RGB equivalent. What do I mean? Red, green, blue equivalent. If you check on Google X color of the code, you, when you paste that code X this something to RGB to to RGB, it will give you the actual color combination of those of that X code. Okay, okay, sir, okay, sir. I think that's what I have to say, sir. OK, thank you very much. Thank you once again for your time. So I, I see people are asking. People are so asking you questions. My dad? Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, can you can anybody hear me? Hello?
Okay, so I think something's up with my. Okay, my my system back. Sorry about that too. So my system just all of a sudden went black. Um. Okay, so thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your time. Um. It's, he wanted a review of it, Taj, but uh, sorry, I can't see the dash but again. But from what I could see, I had some points. But I'll quickly um take it up. Hi, Christy. Can you can you hear me? Hi, Christy. So quickly, quickly present your dashboard, then I'll be taking questions. So mute your mic, quickly present your dashboard in about three minutes. And I'll be taking questions, questions you have on Excel. Hi, Christy, are you here with us? Hello? Yes, can, can you quickly present your dashboard, what you've done? Sorry, I'm on mobile, the dashboard is on the system. Can I go ahead? Okay, do you have the picture to your dashboard? Have you dropped yes, it? Yes, I sent it already. Let me send it again. Okay, so Okay, so I'll share my screen so people can see. So from there. So once you drop it, you can start presenting. Can you see it? I just sent it. Okay, so, so it has, okay, I've seen it, I've seen it. Okay, 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 this is interesting. Okay, please go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so from here we can see that uh, consumer segment provided the highest revenue. And in terms of profit, the consumer segment also amounted for the highest share of the profit that the company made. And then coming to demographics, we see that California, the the highest amount of sales was from California. And sorry, what else can I see here? Okay, and in category, the technology category amounted for both the highest sales and the highest profit. So when we um, when we filter by first class ship mode, we realize that both the sorry when we filter by ship mode, we realize that the consumer segment still maintains its uh, highest. Revenue contribution. Sorry, I'm not very prepared for it. And when we tune down to uh, years now, we see that in 2014, the overall, though the overall profit we have, the overall average profit is 12%. But when we tune down to 2014 alone, when we narrow down to 2014 alone, we realize that that overall profit reduces to 10%. And sorry, I'm saying these things off the top of my head because my system is down. What else can I remember? That's basically all I can remember for now. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Thank. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So well done. Well done on this. The color combination is is it nice. It's interesting. It's everything is legible. Um, is legible for my end. And the alignment, yes. the alignment is okay. The alignment is good as well. So. Um, well, well done on this. Well done on this. Well done on this. Dad, Please, but, I have a question. Well, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. You know, I used Naira because I wanted to play around with some of the functions, but then I ran myself into trouble with the process. So after okay, using well, Naira, I realized that Adewale converted his total revenue from that 2,000 uh, 2 million, whatever, that long figure, to make mm -hmm. it abbreviated to something or something M. So I went mm -hmm. to Google to find out how he did it. Then I went into the custom number format and did an mm -hmm. edit there, which gave me this 2.2 M instead of two comma mm -hmm. something, something. Now the mm -hmm. thing has crashed my Excel. Mm. It worked out good then, but now immediately I click, click immediately I click custom whatever to try to edit uh, go to go back to that custom. 
Because after sending this yesterday, I was like, okay, since he used dollar, let me also do the dollar one and send. So I did the dollar. I wanted to make it 2.2 M as well, not that 2 million or whatever. So I tried going back to that custom something. Immediately I clicked that place, it will just hang my Excel. In fact, that was what ran my laptop battery down. I've tried everything since. I don't know. I've uninstalled my Office 365. I subscribed on another account. Still, nothing. Mm. That that is that's strange. Um, but okay, so for everybody, um, maybe what they should it should it um individual what they should it in the video rather. So for everybody, what he's talking about is he tried to format a large digit. So right now I'm just going to do round between. Round between is a formula to generate um random numbers. Uh, random numbers I can do it from one thousand to let me do from one million or so. I need something really, really large. Something like this, yeah, to maybe two million. So I just need a random number from this to two million. So something like this, right? Uh, yeah. So this is a random number from one million to two million. So you try to format it to to um to show the to show that m so one thing we need yes. to know a format cannot change what is in the cell a format only changes what you see and what you see is not necessarily what is in the cell so that's a rhyme that my boss is normally used to saying david brown so a format can only change what can only change what you what you see it cannot change what is in the cell so there are interesting couple of interesting things you can do with formatting in Excel. So I like that your question very much because if I press Control One, that's the shortcut to number format. If I want to hide this number, if I don't want people to see this number, I can just do something. I can just count everything and just do something like this: three semicolons, and I click on OK. Now this number is hidden from the viewers' eye, viewers' eyes. But there's something in this cell. There's something in this cell. That number is still in this cell, but it is hidden. That's one thing you can do with number format. And what I just did was three semicolons to achieve that. So to achieve that three semicolons, so I've hidden the number. So it's, that's just a simple trick. I said, let me show you one other. So to do what he was talking about. So if you come to custom, if you do come to custom. So you need to understand the idea behind it. So a single comma represents a thousand. You are not changing the number. You are just changing how the number is seen. A single comma represents a thousand. Two comma represents a million. Three a billion. Four probably a trillion or so. So so um yeah probably. So that is the format. This is not changing what is in the cell. It's just changing how people see the cell. And I can now use a quotation and do M for million. So it says 1.48 million. So th this, this is how it is done. So this is how it is done. In regards to your, your issue of your Excel, your Excel have rolling or your Excel having issue, formatting itself, formatting itself shouldn't cause that issue. You may need to check if your um, Office 365 Excel had was installed properly. So there's a video on how to repair um, repair Office 365 or repair Excel. So you can just check. You can go. You search that on YouTube. If I see that, I know I shared that with somebody a couple of times. You can check. You can check through the video if it will help you. But the formatting itself shouldn't affect your Excel. Hope I've answered your question. Hello? Yes, I said thank you. I'll try that. Okay. Okay, please do. Thanks. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So right now I'm going to thank you very much, Christy. So right now um, I'm going to be taking questions. I'm seeing some interesting dashboard dashboards um below. So Opemi said I should review his dashboard. So let me just review what Opemi has done. So you can ask your question, just ask your question. Anything in Excel. After we round up with this um, session, we'll be going fully to Power BI 
and some other interesting tools as well. So ask your question, Excel related, anything in Excel. So I said I'm here to help you Excel with Excel. That's what I'm here to do. So drop your questions in the chat. So I'm looking at. So well, well done, um, appear me. So, uh, so yeah, the the dashboard is nice. The dashboard is nice. Um, alignment. So one thing you need to know when people are reviewing that, but what people look out for number one, alignment. Are things well aligned? Um, it's it's not badly aligned, though it can be improved on a little bit. But it's it's good. It's good. Also, the legibility. Can people read what is being shown on the screen? And that's what uh, maybe these values can be a little bit more legible as well. So you can think of implementing implementing that as well. Um, but overall, well done on your dashboard. So two questions. Please kindly explain the function of index and match. So index and match, they basically index and match, they are lookup functions in Excel. Index and match, using the two of them together, you can basically do what you do with VLOOKUP, with XLOOKUP, or with XLOOKUP. That's what index and match can do. Match is a function that helps you specify the address of um, helps you get the position of an item on a list. That's what match does. Index, I, okay, I want to show something really, really interesting. Really, really interesting. So I'll show that, um, I'll show that during this session as well. So index, rather index it work is also a lookup function, but the only issue with index is that index, index requires two, two parameters. Index requires a, row and a column. So um, let me look for a simple data set. I can I can just show what I want to show. OK, let me create one. I'm just going to drag this down. Then I'll click on this plus button, fill series. So I just filled. Oh, uh, this, this is just something simple. I'll just call it names and I'll call this score. Now I want to find out the score of somebody in this list, maybe a day. Oh, roots. So let's just imagine the situation where we have maybe 1,000 names, 10,000 names. We need to find the scores in this list. So this is where index, index and match come to play. So index, what does index do? If you do equals to index, so you press your tab button. For people that are beginning in Excel, what, what I normally advise them to use, use the function argument box. Function argument box, if you don't know what a function does, if you are not clear with what a function does, use that box, let that box be your guide. And the how you can get to the function argument box, if you press control, if you press control A, if you press control A. So in there, there are two parameters, there's the area array, or there's the normal reference index function, but you can just use the array. I'm just keeping it simple. So under this function argument box, you can just search, you can just search for read what the function argument is stating. First, return a value or a reference to reference of the cell at the intersection of a particular row and column. So basically, I know a lot of us, we have books, we have books, right? You normally see an index number. When you check that index number in a book, you will be able to go to 
probably that particular section of the book, that particular topic of the book, that's the same thing this index is doing. But for this index to work, you need to provide these certain parameters, certain um, parameters, and that's where this argument, this other argument comes into play. So the first thing is an array. An array will represent your range of values, right? An array, it can be a table. It's, it's just basically your range of values. But for index, you have to now tell it what road do you want to, what road do you want to go to? Basically, that's what you are telling index. What row number do you want to go to? When you've selected the entire array, you tell it what row number do I want to go to? Um, root is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Root is seven. So now the index function, you are telling the index to go to um, select this table, go to row seven. The next thing is what column number what column number are you interested in? Basically, that's what this index is saying. So I want to see the score I can specify to. I can specify two. So two is the score. Two is the column number I'm interested in. Two. Press OK. So I get 15 for roots. For roots. But can you notice something with this formula? <laughs> one issue with this formula. Uh, the one issue with this formula is is it's not really smart. It's kind of dumb. It's kind of dumb in the sense that how to specify. Oh, how to specify the particular row I'm going to, the particular column that I'm going to. So this is where match comes into play. I don't know if we did VLOOKUP or match, but um, this is where match comes into play. So what match does? What match does on its own? OK, so what match does on its own? What match does on its own? Match helps you find the position of an item in a list. That's what match does. Basically, match helps you to do what? Find the position of an item in a list. So right now, we need to find the position of roots in this list. You saw I counted it and I saw roots was seven. Roots was seven, right? Um, and we also need to find the position score. This score is in this list. What is the column header for this score? And score is position two. So this is where match comes into play. I'll just do equals to match. So remember, I always start your formula with equals to <laughs> equals to match. Uh, look up value. What am I looking for? I'll select this. Um, so the first one I want to find the position root is in this in this array. Look up array. I'll just select probably this. This array, I can select this array, any one of them is fine. Match type to return an exact match, it will be zero. So I press close my bracket. So we see seven, right? We see seven right here. So this represents what? The row number. So this represents the row number. This is seven. The next thing is the column number. What position is score on this table? So you need to know the reason why we are using matches. You can have up to 1,000 names. You can have up to 5,000 names. This is a simple scenario, but you can still apply. One thing I tell people is you don't have to learn how to do a function with 10,000 names before you know how to do it. No, you just learn it with one or two or three or four. That's why I use this simple example. You can replicate it with as much names as you want. Column number, you yeah, we just have two columns. It's it will make probably make sense to just leave it as two, but you can specify, you can specify that okay, because to match, I want to see what position I'm going to use this blank space. This will represent the uh, position, um, the column I'm interested in. I can specify score itself, score itself, but it's fine, and I'm looking for. Which array am I looking for score? I'll just select this column header. Right? Then comma zero, close my bracket. It's showing any right now because there's nothing there. But when I type score, 
it will show it will show two. It will show two. So the reason so we can see match is telling us that this root is in position seven of this table and the score root has is in column two. It's in column two of this table, right? That's simple and to understand. So if you remember index, what does index do? Index needs three things. Index needs an array. It needs row number. And it needs column number, column number. So with this knowledge that we have in mind, this simple knowledge we have, we can combine these two functions. If you remember, I dropped it in the chat. One thing you need to know before you combine any functions together, know the input of one function and the output of another function. The input, what, input, what I mean by input is what is required by one function. Then you know the output of the other function. What is What do the other function give me? And what is the output of this match function? This match function I have here, the output is what a number, and this represents the real number. This other match function which I have here is a number. The output is a number which represents the column number. So I'll just come here and just do like equals to index, and I'll select the entire array. Remember, array your range of values, comma the row number. What row do I want to go to? This way I can use my match, specify match. And I'm looking for roots, right? Comma. Look up array in this array. Maybe I may want to lock it. You want to keep an absolute reference so it doesn't change. Then exact match. Exact match. So this is for the row number. This is for the row number. We're not done. Then comma the column number. The column number. You know we did a separate match for the column number. I'm going to do match, and I'm going to se do select um, lookup value will be this score that we have here. Comma lookup array will be this header we have here. Look it. Then comma zero. Close my bracket. Close my bracket. So when I okay, when I hit enter, we have this 15. We have this 15. So we have this same thing we have here. We have this 15. Now, somebody will ask me, why did we go to this trouble of doing this when we could have done this? Now, notice, notice what I'll do on my screen. I change this root to Paul. What do we notice? Okay, so let me even look at this. Oh. Okay, so I need to even look at this. Let me see. Are we your number is this? Mm, okay, okay. So, so it's something, something important. I, I just remember something for index because index for the rows index start from um, zero. So you have to be aware of that. For for index because a index for the row number it also counts for um, zero. So let me show. So me specifying seven, it was looking at the wrong thing rather. It also counted because, sorry, for the array, because for the array, I selected these names and stuff. So it was looking at the wrong thing when I was counting, when I was counting that. So I just needed to adjust it by plus one, but, but it works, it works all well and good. The row number, um, it, it works all well and good. So it still works, the formula still works. If I change this to G5 instead of G4, let me select seven. Let's see. So you see G5 instead of G4 because I selected the row number 
the road heading, that's that was why we had the issue. And that was the reason why I added plus one here. So you don't even need the plus one. I didn't need to select the heading, so I just specified G5. So we have this. So we have this, we have roots here. So if I change this route to Paul, let's see. Can you notice there's a difference between this one and what we have here? This one, this one is updated. Why this one is not? Because this one is dumb. This one is the dumb formula, a dumb function because it's static on that value. It's just static on that value. But with using this combination of the two, index and match, you can automate it in some extent. Um, so that was not what I plan to do, but it's good somebody asked that question. So I just quickly showed that. So right now, quickly be taking questions. Any question on the, the index and match? Any question on Excel? So we are slowly rounding up. We are slowly rounding up. We have maybe just 10 minutes. So quickly, quickly questions, question. So how can I know how to interpret a data? I want to know how Adewale knows what to do when he sees a data like grouping, categorizing profits, sales, and likes. Okay, okay, so I can see a lot of questions. Okay, so the first question I'll be taking is from Christopher. Hi, Joseph, kindly take us through how we can automate and create a dynamic report in PowerPoint such that we can just refresh the data dump updates update the report in PowerPoint. Okay, so so in regards to your question, in regards to your question of um, automating, you can actually copy, because Microsoft tools are integrated together, because Microsoft tools are in integrated together, you can actually copy a chart in your Excel and drop it in PowerPoint, copy and paste, just paste it in PowerPoint and you see, your ex, your um, PowerPoint, just do something, just update it. I don't have a chart, unfortunately, here that I'll show you. Um, but just do, just copy it, paste it in your PowerPoint. Just try it, paste it in your PowerPoint. Make updates to the data. Just go to, just refresh that pivot chart. Refresh that pivot chart. Then you will have, you will, you will see that updated in real time as well, as well. So please, how do I align in Excel before auto before aligning? So there are various ways of aligning aligning in Excel. So one thing you may want to do is a lot of people you can click on the row, the column header. You can click on the row. You can be on a cell. You can press Control Shift down now key to highlight down to highlight down Control Shift right now key to highlight to the right. So you can use those um, ways of highlighting. You can, if you are even using your mouse, it's just that mouse is more tedious as I will take it. You can highlight with your mouse. So, so more questions. So how can I know how to interpret a data? Excellent question, excellent question. You know what, uh, so do I have this? Excellent question, so let me see if I can. Bring. So excellent question. So one thing you have to have in mind when you're asked to analyze data or when you have um, data to analyze, generally speaking, you are, you have to you should do your analysis in based on two metrics, two metrics which is normally advisable generally speaking. You have quantity related to your categories, and that's what um, that's what Adewale looked out for knows what to do when he sees a data that's what you you should look you should look out for basically in your data you have stuff you call quantitative fields these are your numbers these are your aggregations these are your um they are your values basically they are your numbers that's what your quantities are your categories tell, provide more context to your data provide more um more uh, information to your Data. Let me give this example. If I say 10 million, if I say 10 million, 10 million, well, it sounds good and good and well, but I've not provided any context to the uh, any context to the 10 million. What is 10 million? What is 10 million? That's the question people will ask me. So that's where your categories come into play. Your categories answer the question of who, what, when, why, 
um, wear as well. So one one even interesting thing that I want to show. So let me show this. Do we have this? Can you see my screen? 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 If you can see my screen, type yes in the chat. If you cannot, type no. Okay, yes. Okay, yes. So it's so one even interesting thing you need to know. Though for this, I your version of Excel has to be at least maybe later than maybe 2016. I think it's still available in 2016. Do you know in your data? Everybody shouting AI, 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 AI. Do you know in Excel itself, they've been already in Excel. Do you know right now this entire data that we have here? Once you know it is clean, it's very, very clean. It's it's clean. It follows our seven day, seven golden rules of data. If we can remember those rules, you know, in a click of a button, I can generate more than 20, 20 reports based on this data. More than 20 reports based on this data in a few seconds. And let me just show you. Come to my home button and uh, don't worry, I'm not talking of chat GBT in for Excel or GPT for Excel. I'm not also talking about Python for Excel. Uh, so under my home button, if I click on analyze data, analyze data, this should be, I think this should still be available for 2019 users. Office 365 users, you definitely have it, but you have to be connected to the internet, I think for this as well. So it's good to know that. So in case if it's not working without the internet, you should just probably switch it on. So click on, Analyze data, analyze data. So under few seconds, the AI in Excel will analyze my data for me. It, so that person that asked the question, how do you even know what to um, analyze? So you, one thing you can do, you can do quantity. If you group your data into quantity related to categories, you know how or what to an analyze. Also, this analyzed data can give you some insights. You can even get some reports based on this analyzed data. So one analysis it did was profit by subcategory and region. This is an interesting analysis it did. Um, discount by region, quantity by segment and category. Something interesting that I felt it did. If I like it, I can do insert pivot table. And the moment I click on the SAP pivot table, I have it. I have it here. I have it on my screen. And the beauty of why we why they didn't publish show this initially is that you need to understand the process so that you won't just take AI is very, very good, but as much as possible, you need to be able to think for yourself. So you don't just take it garbage in, garbage out. By doing this, you would by understanding the process, you know if the value is given to you is correct or it's not correct and you can even do more editing to the values as well so i can say i can do this i can set the wonderful insights it's given me i can say the see it has provided me 30 results 30 interesting results from the data i can also set in using normal english i can search for a particular report okay i want to see top selling segment. I want to see top selling segment and I hit enter. And it creates me the pivot table. It creates for me the pivot table in matter of minutes, matter of seconds. I have this. I want to see top selling product, different questions that you may have. So as an analyst, one thing you need to be is problem solvers. You have the data. Think of what problem can I solve with the data? Some cases, some business scenarios, you'll be given the problem outrightly, but you should be thinking in problem solution. With this data, what's, what would somebody be interested in seeing? What problem would somebody be interested in seeing? So right now, I'm just quickly going to scroll through the chat for questions um, before we wrap it up. OK, so let me see. OK, 
how can I delete unwanted sheets? So that's very that's very simple. So you have unwanted sheets in your end. So if you um answer my cursor, unfortunately. So if you right click on the sheets, if you right click on the sheet here, yeah, if you right click on the sheet, you can delete a sheet. Though you need to know that deleting a sheet is permanent. It's very, very it's permanent. So you want to delete a sheet, you can bring it back, but you can easily delete a sheet by clicking on the delete button, mm -hmm. delete it, and you've gotten rid of this. I was playing around with that by the way. So, so you have yeah, you can delete it with that method. You can also You can also do some other stuff. OK, so somebody asked one question. The analyzed data, so I said for those using maybe 2019, I feel it should still be available for probably 2016. Well, in case 2019 upwards, you have this analyzed data feature under your home tab. You have this analyzed data feature tab. So you just click on it. Once your data has been structured, you can easily analyze it. So how do I interpret questions to know if I'm to use count, sum, and other formulas? Other formulas. So so to that your question, to that your question, how to interpret questions to know if you should use sum, count, or the other, or other formula. You need to as much as possible, you need to know what the outputs of those functions are. Count, when you use count, you want to see the, you want to see like a quantity, you want to see the amount of something, you want to see the uh, the number of people that probably did a particular stuff. So count, when you are using count, you are trying to think, oh, uh, you want to see, okay, how many people, you have those questions like how many, how much, uh, some yeah, some you are aggregating, you are doing a cluster of everything together. So for that, your question, when you should use, how you know if, when you need to use some count, one thing you need to do is just understand the results of those formulas, understand the result and the argument of those formulas. By understanding the argument, you know which is best to solve your particular scenario, which is best to solve your particular issue. So if you do equals to some, uh, is my screen frozen? Oops, sorry, my screen was frozen. So if you do equals to some, you press a tab, you can press Control A. You can press Control A and it opens the function argument box. So if you are if you are at the learning stage, you don't really know how to use or when to use certain formula, you can just read what the function is doing. Add all the numbers in the range of cells. That's what sum does. Count, what do count do? Count does this. What do mean do? What mean does this? Max does this. That Max does that as well. So, so that's how you can sort of start thinking of how you can interpret when you need to use um, sum, count, mean, max, and other functions as well. So can I use Excel on the web to create my dashboard? Well, to some extent, there are things you can do on the web, but there are some limitations with uh, with Excel on the web. As far as you have Office 365, which I believe you should have for you to be talking of Excel on the web, you can do, you can basically do your report in your Excel, Excel desktop with your Office 365. You can do your report in your Excel desktop. You can do, like I said, as at now, there are certain things you can do on the web, which, and there are certain things you can do on the desktop, but some people prefer, a lot of us prefer the desktop because you have a, a lot more, probably should I say a lot more features as at now. So things could change, things could evolve as well. So uh, so to some extent, there are some ways you can do the dashboard in on the web, but to do probably a more robust work, I will advise you to use the desktop version. Um, hi, Mofin, Mofin uh, Folua, did I answer your question? Um, so, so Joy said she's using 2021, but did not see analyzed data. Hmm, 
Interesting. Okay, so others others could confirm as well. Um, but you could maybe it's not analyzed data, but you can just look out for this logo. Um, but if you don't have it, it's fine as well. I shared a document on how you can get Office 365. Um, get Office 365 so you can check the WhatsApp group for that document. You can even check YouTube. If you have the developer account, you can, um, or if you have your company's account, if you have the developer account, preferably, you can go to office.com, then download Office 365 for your desktop. So you should have that. If you've watched the videos on that, on that PDF, you can also watch videos on YouTube as well on how to install it. Just search the word developer account, you'll find that out. So, um, any more questions before we call it a day? Uh, I know our time is fast, spent. Any more questions? So I'll just be taking from OpenME one last time. Then I hope you've enjoyed the session so far. I hope I hope so. So it was the last time I raised up my my hand for the dashboard presentation. I'm not asking any question, guess. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, so we've, okay. So, just one last person. So, I like I said, I hope you've enjoyed the session. Um, so, you can also drop your question on the WhatsApp group. Well, I'm giving maybe time, so I would, I'll try to answer as well. Okay. So, hi, Aina. Um, sorry if I mispronounced your name. Can you quickly speak? So, five seconds. Okay. So, good afternoon. Sir. Yeah, I guess my. I raise my hand of that time to present my dashboard. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's good. Oh, and you uh, went uh, to Yeah. Unless you want me to present some. Mm, time, 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 time. But don't worry, you can no share worries. the dashboard in the chat. Yeah. You one thing we can do, one cha interesting challenge I want us to do is uh we can present you can just record with powerpoint you can learn how to do that do that it's just simple record a presentation of yourself with powerpoint post it post it on linkedin while i have been saying engage linkedin engage twitter a lot post your work or post your work out there you don't know who is looking at it you don't know who which of your helpers is looking at it tag tag influential people you can tag my account you can tag adi wali you can tag people so we it gains more visibility we can also help with posts as well just do a short recording you can record your face if you want oh hi my name is this i did this interesting dashboard um in with excel here's how i did it you don't have to go too deep in it but you can just give a brief overview or you can talk about the insight you gain from the that from the data so thank you very much i know so everybody, I want us to take up that challenge. Let's do that as well. So how do I extend my 365 free usage? So you say my office 365, seven days of our year lapse. So it, it's not supposed to be seven days. If it's the developer account, it's supposed to be um, at least 90 days. If you use it, it's extendable up to a year. Um, so, but I'm guessing you subscribe for free trial. You can, you may want to do, um, the developer um, account out. So thank you everyone once again in today's session. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. Um, thank you for thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you for your time. So, I know it's rain, so uh, I think I think uh, you deserve a lot of round of applause. Please, can we give Joseph uh, a virtual round of applause? This is an awesome session. He was able to cover a lot of things. Is in just how many hours? Just one hour, please. Let's keep clapping. I can see some clapping. Let's keep clapping. Let's keep clapping. I need to clap myself. So that's an awesome session. That's an awesome session. Thank you so much, uh, Joseph, for the insightful session. I think I learned a lot from your session as well, and I'm sure that uh, people also learn <laughs> from, from the session. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Now, one thing I want us thank to you, do, Gawai. last statement, Said, Joseph mentioned about posting on LinkedIn on social media. I think I only saw some few people that posted their dashboard, and I think I like or probably make a comment on your dashboard. I have not seen most of us doing that. Please, let's 
do that immediately after this session today. Make it a challenge immediately after today's session. If it's Twitter that you can post, or if it's LinkedIn that you can post, make sure you post to either of the two and make sure you tag me. If you don't tag me, I would rather like it or give you a feedback right there in your report. So everybody, can we commit to that? Type yes or no in chat. If you agree to what I'm saying, that after this session, literally we leave here. You are going to make sure you post your work online. You are documenting your learning online, so that way uh, people see your improvement. Please type yes or no in chat if you commit to doing that immediately after the session. Let me see the commitment we have. Yeah, so for my LinkedIn, Adewale Yusuf, just like Adewale Yusuf MVP, you should be able to see. see. Then to Twitter, I think uh, at Adewale Analyst, that's the, that's the, my Twitter handle, at Adewale Analyst. So, so please, everybody should do that. Now, the second challenge I gave you guys last week, it was two challenge I gave you guys last week. The first one was this dashboard. Wow, wow the second one, Almost everybody has not typed yes. I can only see yes from five people or six people. And we are over 60 or close to 100 on this call. Please, we are going to post your dashboard. Please make sure you post. And the people that have not done their dashboard, I will plead with us. Please make sure you do it. At least before next week. You have one more week. I can give us the grace of one more week. Make sure you do it and post it online. Post it on. Uh, yes, of course, the short course I gave, I gave you guys to watch. And then some people after they ending their certificate, I can see some certificate on uh, WhatsApp already. But don't let us put the certificate on WhatsApp. Add it to your LinkedIn, post it on LinkedIn, tag me. That's what I want to see. I want to see how we are improving based on our learning. So post that same certificate. If you have not done, uh, if you have not done, just do a screenshot of your screen, it's fine. Even if you can't save as a picture, do a screenshot. So um, post that certificate online. Let's see that. And I'm sure I can react to that as well. So all in all, thank you so much again for the today's session, Joseph. We'll be putting the recording on the YouTube channel so, so that the people that miss this session can see their needs. Thank you, John. So thank you so much, everyone. If you have any more questions, please put it right there in the world. Get a response from any of us. Okay, so um, before I go, so yes, my LinkedIn and Twitter account. So in case if you want to connect, um, you can connect. You can follow. I if you connect, I'll surely accept connections as well. So so thank you everyone once again for today's session. Thank you Wale for the opportunity. Um. Uh, oh yeah, so you can also drop it in the in the chat on WhatsApp. So I would see if I can look into it. So thank you everyone once again. Bye for now. And thank my avatar once again for his time. So <laughs> uh, bye for now. <laughs>